Good evening. Um, it's 8.06 on April 24th, Monday. I am going to begin. Oh, sorry. No, it's not April 26th. The community meeting is on April 26th. Today is April 24th. It's Monday. And I'm getting ready to go ahead and start budget session number three. Mr. City Manager, can you just confirm that we have a quorum here in City Council? Yes, you do. Man. Awesome. Thank you. So now I'm going to turn it over to you, Mr. City Manager. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Good, good morning, everybody. Uh, good afternoon, excuse me. I'm not, not morning yet. Not, not, not that late. But yeah, well, yeah, wrong day one. Okay. So uh, today we're going to go through the community services uh, de uh, department uh, led by uh, Sally Hine here to my right. And um, just for the, for the record, there are 132.9 uh, employees in this particular division uh, department because of its, it's very complex. And for those who are listening, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give everybody a description of what this department does. Uh, we're going to start on page 91 of the, in your uh, budget book. Uh, the Department of Community Services scope of responsibility encompasses a wide range of programs and facilities, including recreations and parks, historic properties, building maintenance, Ken Hill Center, parks and grounds, code compliance, animal control, senior services, special events, the Youth Services Bureau, the Ice Arena, the Bowie Playhouse, and the Gymnasium. The department also facilitates outreach efforts into the community. Uh, looking at the objectives for FY 2023, uh, the, uh, the objective to migrate the evening community meetings from usage of Ken Hill to uh, Bowie's Senior Center. Um, there remains community interest in using the Ken Hill Center for evening uh, meetings at this time. The Senior Center will be made available for expanded Saturday community use and therefore this, that objective was complete. If you look at B there, it's a, the objective was to collaborate with Indigo Golf to initiate golf course improvements by August the 31st of 2022. They, um, the following um, golf course improvements were initiated. Uh, the A&E for the driving range renovation and expansion, A&E for the structural enhancements of the, of the clubhouse, A&E for the new uh, maintenance facility, install, installation of new irrigation system, completion of the water source study, and consolidation of the clubhouse pro shop to the dining area. Uh, therefore, this, in, this uh, objective is complete. Uh, I like to note that uh, the golf course, you know, is, 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 has been much improved over the last years, especially since um, the city took control with Indigo uh, Golf. Uh, <clears throat> uh, see there to collaborate with the city departments to establish five year strategic plan for municipal utilization of Ken Hill Center. The plans to be developed by September uh, 2022. The needs assessment was completed. Additional space was allocated for requesting departments to address current and short-term needs. Additional research may be needed to address mid and long-range office and storage needs for the city. Uh, number D there, establish a construction program for the new ice arena uh, by January 31st, 2023. We have uh, at worked that up completely and added it to the CIP the um, this fiscal year the um, will be the um, uh, the architectural and engineering and design uh, for FY 2024 forthcoming, and with ten current plans to begin construction in the following fiscal year, if if the council at the time is so inclined, uh, collaborate with the uh, arts committee to uh, commission. An artist design and replace the existing buoy landscape. Uh, preliminary design was was submitted by the artist. Community input was was gathered, and currently we're coordinating with State Highway Administration to in an effort to complete the process. If you go to page 92, there you'll see that um, the work performance and in, workload and performance indicators are generally the same. Um, exception, we have more projects this year than scheduled than we had in 78, if you look at the, the first line there. 
and um, the same is the case for uh, dwelling units per code and floor, uh, enforcement officer. That number's gone up. Now, um, under the objectives for 2024, uh, they, they, this department intends to work with the uh, information tech, uh, with information technology, implement code compliance, rental housing inspections, animal control and construction permitting software solution, and train the appropriate staff uh, with the objective of December 31st, 2023. Number two, they develop a fee and waiver discount program for low-income residents to provide affordable participation in city recreation programs by December of 2023. Three, to evaluate the public facilities on ADA accessibility and develop a budget that phases in improvements. Budget proposals may be submitted by January, uh, should be submitted by January 2024. Uh, for they collaborate with the communications divisions the division to integrate the city's new branding into all relevant communications across the department uh, by April 30, 2024. And number five, in partnership with the Department of Public Works, design the new ice, buoy ice arena in, uh, by August, by, excuse me, June 30, 2024. <clears throat> the um, significant budget changes or involve reclassification to administrative associate grade X109 to administrative assistant X110 to uh, also um, for two FTEs at a cost of 3,187, reclassification of community outreach specialist from X114 to community outreach program manager X116 at a cost of 9,947 and um, if you notice during the budget, we have done some reclassifications and we also use the term stratification to adjust the, uh, the qualifications and, 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 and pay of our employees based on, on certifications and uh, upward mobility within the, within the city. This also helps us with retention, which is just as important as recruiting uh, is today, especially with the fact that we, we cities and counties sometimes take each other's people. Uh, if you look at page 93, you'll see that um, uh, the community services uh, administrative op operation here uh, is uh, 751,600 in salary and wages, friend benefits 27,500, uh, professional services, uh, contractual services 252, uh, program supplements. Um, if you read the, down here in other charges, 17500 Bowie Center for the Performing Arts, community-based um, social services programs, emergency relief fund, arts and education, and outreach committee grants. Um, so that concludes the, uh, the administrative and headquarters section, if I can use that term, for our community services. Building maintenance is next, but are there any questions regarding what I just went through? Yes, Mr. City Manager. Um, quick, uh, if we could quickly go back to uh, page 91 and the uh, uh, reference to item B, collaborate with Indigo Golf to initiate golf course improvements. Uh, <clears throat> can you give me a quick overview of, um, uh, of how things are proceeding in terms of the business side. I know that there have been significant improvements in the um, uh, facility itself in terms of uh, trees being attended to, progress is being made in terms of uh, capital improvements and maintenance things. Uh, I know that the um, irrigation is, is moving along. Uh, is there been any uh, commensurate increase in, in, uh, in business as well? Good evening, Council. Next Virgin Community Services. Uh, operations at the golf course are, are doing very well. Uh, Indigo seems to be, uh, appears to be a very strong partner. Uh, the number of rounds are, are very strong. Uh, you go there just about any day and the parking lot's full. Um, we're, we're hearing pretty much positive comments. Excellent. And how do we stand? Uh, are we seeing a similar increase in revenues as well? Uh, 
in, in terms of we started out without having any information in regards mm -hmm. to um, what Very the revenue true. was going uh, <laughs> to be. So um, we, we are uh, past our first year. Um, in the first year, uh, in, in terms of what was uh, expected with uh, the budget, uh, we exceeded revenue on the rounds of golf for what was anticipated. Um, however, we had challenges with uh, food and beverage and liquor sales because mm -hmm. there were delays and challenges in terms of uh, getting those sides of the operation uh, up and running. Um, what uh, has continued to be is uh, steady, strong um, rounds of golf, which have um, met and exceeded uh, the expectations in, in the budget. So all in all, to this point, we are seeing the revenues um, meeting the expectations that were uh, projected in the budget for it. Uh, also increasing is the um, uh, I, I guess sort of the, the program reven uh, revenue for uh, events and outings. Um, those are developing and new partnerships are coming along. So all in all, it's progressing well. Um, you know, I, I, we're, we're still in a learning phase as we are in the very early months of the uh, second year of our, our budget, uh, but it, it's meeting our expectations and the weather has been very good, which has uh, really helped with getting those r rounds up. Uh, certainly this is a weather-based activity and it could change very quickly with uh, some different seasons. Excellent. Uh, I've heard uh, nothing but positive things. At the beginning there were a few, you know, uh, hiccups, I don't want to say hiccups, but uh, some concerns raised by constituents here or there as they were I think basically transitioning to the new uh, the new organization and it wasn't necessarily exactly the way it used to be uh, but so far I've heard that it's all been uh, been very positive at what point in time do you think you could do a pulse check for us uh, understanding we're you know past a year uh, maybe just kind of an overview for the council in terms of um, uh, progress on uh, on rounds and these other things that you've been mentioning, I, I think I, I think it would be good maybe um, a, a, as we get towards the end of spring we can uh, check in and we can get a, a good update for the council so we can see where we're at because uh, uh, certainly we're coming out of some winter months in the uh, beginning of this first year. So as we get through the spring and we see what the spring performance is, we'll then have two springs that we can kind of compare, and that may be a good time to get an update for you all. Excellent. Well, uh, I look forward to, uh, to seeing that. Thank you. All right, then. Uh, well, we'll proceed with... I apologize. Um, sure. Uh, on the branding initiative, I, my impression is that uh, city staff were still contemplating the branding. Um, I wasn't aware that we were moving forward with implementing it. Well, we're still working on it. This is a proactive objective on the part of community services that when a brand is finally voted on and approved by the council, they'll be in a position to integrate it into their operations. Understood. Okay. So the uh, Page 94, which is building maintenance. This activity provides a centralized building maintenance for at all city operated buildings, which includes HVAC, plumbing, electrical, generator, and custodial maintenance and repairs for all city owned buildings. Uh, the objectives for 2023 will implement the reorganization of the building maintenance division and onboard new custodial supervisor. The reorganization of the division included um, the FY 2024 budget submittal, new custodial supervisor started in October. Uh, manage and complete the HVAC replacement at Ken Hill Center by June 30, 2023. This project uh, at the the um, the bids have been selected and will be presented to the council within a matter of weeks for the selection of the uh, of the contractor. But we're going through the administrative. Uh, aspect of that right now and but we're going to have that done before the fiscal year is out um, the performance um, factors and workload those numbers have, have been very constant over, from one year to the next uh, the objectives for 2024 is to implement the stratification of the plumber HVAC building maintenance workers series by the July of 2023 install motorized ADA door hardware on all city conference rooms 
uh, doors by August the 31st, 2023. And uh, by the way, 181 is, 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 is ADA access now for your information. Um, complete the Playhouse HVAC and roof replacement projects by October 30, 2023. Facilitate the Information Technology Department expansion to, to the Ken Hill Center by November 2023. Develop a phase plan replacement of flooring at the City Hall by December 31st of 2023. And manage and complete HVAC replacement at Ken Hill Center by June 2024. Uh, there are reclassification of uh, the building maintenance supervisor grade Y113 to building maintenance assistant superintendent grade Y114. A cost of four thousand four, uh, excuse me, four thousand six oh eight. That's that is the significant budget change associated with this particular uh, division. It has uh, thirteen employees, FTEs in there, and um, of course. Uh, you know, salary and wages are the big things at seven fifty nine hundred and twenty two two hundred six six thousand one hundred for friends benefits. Uh, utilities are are there. Repair and maintenance of the facilities there in the, at the bottom of ninety five three hundred forty seven thousand dollars, including contractual services for electrical, plumbing, heating, air conditioning, and other repairs, which are beyond the cap capability of our staff. And uh, uh, further on page 96, there's a, a significant number, 90,200 for repair and maintenance supplies, lumber, nails, hardware, paint, and other items that are required to, to do our job, for our guys to do their job. That is the Building Maintenance Division of Community Services. Are there any questions about this budget? Uh, yes, Mr. City Manager, on page 94, uh, item six under objectives, uh, manage and complete the HVAC replacements for Ken Hill Center. Uh, I'm surprised that we're in need for those. That, that's like the second round, I think, uh, since we left that building uh, from as a, as operated as, when it was operating as City Hall. So, Councilman, we did half of them so you're mostly right. We did half of them the first time around of doing the other half. So it's not the second time. It's gotcha. really just completing the full project. Gotcha. All right. Thank you very much. I feel, I'm not sure if I feel better about it or not. <laughs> but thank you. Mm -hmm. One of the things is Ken Hill's an older building, and, and they have twice as many rooftop units than, than others, so uh, you know, it's just breaking it out. Thank you. All right. Um, I've got a, I've, can, can we just go back to page, sorry, I have a couple of questions. Starting from page 91, I'm gonna go back there. Um, Daniel, you had expanded in terms of the revenue for the golf course, and you had mentioned that the numbers of um, the number of rounds had exceeded what the projections were. Can you, do you have? Can you share the details on the increase of what that revenue increase was by? Do you have that information? I don't have those numbers uh, right in front of me. We we got a new uh, uh, update actually just this morning, so I can uh, get all that information to you exactly what was projected and what uh, what it has been. Okay, awesome. Could yeah, if you could just follow up and share that with the council, that would be um, helpful. And then also, I have another. Uh, question on objective C where it talks about collaborating with city departments to um, establish a five-year strategic plan for Ken Hill Center can you expand a little bit more on the needs assessment that was completed and what that need was was that needs assessment mainly focused on the additional space that was allocated to the requesting departments or was it kind of did it cover a breadth of what more services we might need as a city government like what was that can you expand on the details of that assessment so we included all of the departments um, in this um, discussion, and we asked them what their immediate needs were and what they thought their needs would be for the next five years. So we are looking a little bit in advance, um, but as we say in the objective, we're gonna need to do probably more for, the, for more long-term goals on this. But we were able to meet all of the needs that were expressed. 
IT is a large piece of this. They're going back and going to be reclaiming their IT suite that they used to use when it was City Hall. Um, the police department has some additional space in the building. So as people expressed them to us, we were able to work it out. Um, we did not have to displace any of our tenants at this time, but we still have tenant space that could be turned back into city offices if it was necessary. Okay, so it sounds like if I'm understanding you correctly, that assessment was more focused on like internal usage of how we as the internal government can use that building or leverage that building. Right, we wanted to do the internal usage to see if there was any more space for additional external use by other groups. We do have about four tenants left in the building now that have large suites. Some of them have been there almost since we left 10 years ago. They're all content and happy to remain um, but if it's needed for city use, then they all know that, that it could change. Um, do you have the numbers that are associated with Ken Hill Center in terms of how, like, what the actual differential is from the, um, the revenue that we're getting from the leases that are in there, like the tenants that we have in there, and kind of any type of impact that this expansion might have on us? So I certainly can share the revenue from the tenants that we currently have. The obviously staff, there's no revenue associated with the increased use by staff. Okay, if you could just provide the delta of the income that we're getting from the actual tenants and then what our output is to kind of meet, to maintain that facility, that would be super helpful. Okay, we'll get that to you. And then I have a follow-up question. On the oh, next, we, oh, we want to help. Uh, we got some more information on that question you're asking. Go ahead. Uh, council person, if you would go to page 39 and look at the uh, other revenue section in the current uh, proposed budget, you'll see rental Ken Hill Center. That will give you an idea of the rental streams for the Ken Hill Center and those is basically tenant revenue. Thank you so much, um, Mr. Matthews. Follow-up question for Sally. Is there, um, or in the objectives, is there an intent to potentially look at, um, do a, an assessment that, that relates to external usage, so not just the needs of our departments, but whether there are community meet needs on rental space and things of that, is there an assessment projected to do something like that? So we have no space left in the building with the increased demands by the city use and the four or five tenants that we currently have, we don't have more space. Okay, but, but there is a component of Ken Hill Center that is still available for community rental. So people can use it for meetings and for short term rentals, like a meeting, a conference, but there are no additional spaces at this time that tenants come and tenants go, and we advertise on the city's website what spaces we have. But um, right now, you can come in as a community group and meet, you can come in on a weekend and have a, a two day conference, but we don't have anything you can rent for a week or a month um, straight. And there are fees associated with that, correct? Uh, residents uh, in general are non-fee, but um, non-residents, there are fees attached to it. As long as they use it during staffed hours for residents, there's, there is generally no cost to them. Okay, thank you, that's helpful. Um, now I just have uh, two more questions about page 93. So, or I think you talked about this a little bit on page do, 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 um, on actually page 92 where it says significant budget changes. It looks like you've changed the direction of some FTEs. So it looks like there's a, a projected change in associates or um, you're going from a specialist to a program manager uh, projecting that in FY24. Can you talk a little bit about what's influencing that change? So the, the first part of that on administrative assistance, associates to assistance, is that uh, the, those are the front window positions in community services that serve all of our customer relations. And they have been lower than every other position in the city at the same, doing the same type of work. 
So they were just brought up to the inequity with what everyone else was making. Um, the other position is our uh, community outreach program manager, Lori Cunningham. And she has um, taken on all sorts of special projects and committees and, and just has done an outstanding job. And again, it brings her position to the manager level with all of the other managers and community services. Thank you, Sally. I, I do want to say Lori is absolutely phenom phenomenal. She's dynamite. Um, her position, well, I'm, well, her, she's phenomenal, but that, that's helpful information in terms of what's the change that's influencing that. Last question is, um, I went over a presentation from Prince George's County Community Youth Service Bureaus, and essentially when Prince George's County Youth Community Service Bureaus went in front of the county during their budget, well, for budget, they included Bowie as one of the bureaus that they were requesting funding from. Can you talk about the funding that we get from Prince George's County? So I don't know that I see that reflected in here. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. No more questions for me. Uh, one quick question. Uh, going back to uh, building maintenance, with the issues going on, have we built in some contingency costs within that budget? I, I don't know if historically we've had to use that, but looking at that with all the changes going on, are there some contingency costs built in? Well, I mean, we, are, the, the budget, the building maintenance budget has worked out rather decently. We do probably have a 10% built in, and then I have a contingency uh, account of my own to, to deal with that. Okay. To, to deal with any emergencies. Okay, and, thank you. But we haven't had any issues with that in the last okay. six years since we were Okay, so if there aren't any other questions, we'll go to uh, housing inspection and code compliance. This division is responsible for the rental housing inspection program, code compliance enforcement, and education activities related to residential housing and commercial properties and licensing and building permit functions of the city are managed by this division. Uh, their objectives uh, for 2023 were to collaborate with, with the information technology to implement new housing code compliance software that would enhance the office's efficiency in the field. The an RFP for new software has been advertised uh, by the IT department. Code compliance staff will be will implement once the, the appropriate software has been procured. The re B to replace the code compliant truck number six, which with an all electric truck, further increasing the city's electric uh, fleet uh, uh, capability by March 31st, 2023. While the electric trucks are unavailable, the Lightning, I think that's the one we were looking for at uh, this time, supply chain, staff is placed in this vehicle with an electric sedan, so therefore we've completed the objective and uh, we'll try to get the, the truck later on. Develop a plan for restructuring code compliance division to provide enhanced field coverage, more efficient operations, and internal growth programs for officer advancement based on both the enhanced training with accompanying certifications and years of service uh, certification. Uh, this this uh, budget includes the stratification for housing and code compliance officers, and in several other public works also did that it helps us with our retention, and retention is as important as recruitment these days, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, the objective for 2024, collaborate with HR to uh, update all division position descriptions to appropriately reflect current responsibilities to include staff assignments outlined in the city's emergency operation plan by July 31, 2023. Elaborate, collaborate with the community communications division to restructure the code compliance web pages to focus on direct and easy access to common questions and information. Uh, this objective is to be completed by uh, November 2023. Uh, in collaboration with the emergency management, conduct quarterly damage assessment field exercises with the division staff by May 31st, 2024. The stratification that was mentioned earlier resulted in the creation of uh, the Code Compliance Officer CCO, trainee grade X110, 
Code Compliance Officer 1, Grade X112. Code Compliance Officer 2, Grade X113. And Code Compliant 3, Grade X114 uh, positions resulting in a total increase of 25823 uh, for FY2024. The, um, <clears throat> the total number of FTEs in this division is 9.1, and I think they're, we're short one person, and the recruitment is in place going on as we speak. The uh, salaries and wages are 750, 715, 400, 275, 100, uh, significant amounts of money in contractual services, uh, and um, including printing, code brochures, promotional materials, court ordered abatements and grass cutting and property maintenance, court ordered abatements and grass cutting mowing, mowing property maintenance amounts are offset by revenues collected from property owners for these services. Uh, any questions regarding the code of compliance division? Yes, Mr. City Manager. Um, quality of, of uh, of maintenance and so forth obviously comes up a lot. We have a lot of issues on code. Uh, one of the areas that, and this is anecdotal, uh, that I have some concerns with uh, non-compliance is with uh, those who may be renting their houses out and do not have a rental license uh, for the city. Do we have a way uh, for uh, validating or learning um, or at least educating uh, the uh, residents or homeowners of that obligation? Do we know if there's been any efforts in the past for that? Go ahead. Okay, so um, there's a number of things we do, obviously. When we see rental signs out around the community, we do that. Um, sometimes we can uh, check addresses against other databases and find out if it's a rental property. We put it on our website that it's um, a requirement. Uh, people will tell us that my neighbor's house is a rental. Mm -hmm. um, we find out if there is a violation because we're trying to reach the person who owns the house and it's really the tenant. Whether they have a license or not, it gets it ends up going to the tenant. So. Um, is it a perfect uh, world on that? No, but um, we, we do believe we get them. We would encourage residents to let us know if they feel there's a rental property in their community. And we do have a standard letter that we send out that says something to the effect of, we understand that this is a rental property. Please contact us. Okay. Can we uh, well, do, do a couple of things, perhaps? Uh, one might be, and I don't... I imagine real estate agents know this, uh, but I would say to make sure that everybody uh, in, the, in the real estate community is fully aware, uh, and then perhaps some form of outreach for, uh, you know, in, in some of our communication vehicles that we have, maybe Una could uh, cobble together a communications plan uh, to address both the landlord homeowner as well as residents who may uh, believe that there is a, a house that's um, uh, that's being rented and not being properly monitored by the city uh, because there's no license in place well well what i was thinking about mr wolfley is um certainly we could have uh, owner add um, a, a a something to our normal communications and social media communications about this, but I think what would be even better would be to uh, get, um, we have a high performing uh, video producer, uh, Sonia, and, uh, and, uh, and, and she's done several uh, production programs, short videos on one thing or another that we want to promote, from COVID-19, protecting yourself, to uh, how great the solid waste division is, to, uh, and we put that on our, our, our public TV. And we could do that, uh, and uh, and let uh, Sonia uh, maybe come up with a little script that, that they could, um, you know, uh, talk to the residents that way also. Yeah, that's a great idea, great addition. Uh, let's uh, yeah, let's see what we can do to put something together. That I would definitely uh, 
uh, uh, say include that as well. So thank you very much. Greatly appreciate it. I have a quick question for my own awareness. Do we have any constraints around like Airbnbs in the city of Bowie? Do we like, does our code compliance department get involved in anything like that or that doesn't apply here? Like that type of rental. So uh, the county has a registry for the Airbnbs and we, we actually look at those, we watch those. We do not have a lot of those here in Bowie and we have not heard a lot of complaints. Occasionally you get what's considered a party house, um, but I'm not sure there is much an Airbnb as they simply are um, either a, an owner or a tenant deciding to have large parties at their home where they take an in income from them. The county and the city have a uh, the police department work together on those to try to close those down as soon as we find out they're available. All right, then. Next is the Senior Center Services. Senior Services is responsible for maintaining a multi-use center offering classes, education programs, trips, groups, clubs, special events, fitness facility, and activities for individuals 55 years and older. Transportation is available within the city limits of Bowie uh, to seniors and adults with disabilities. The nationally accredited senior center, which is that is no small task to be credited, also provides information and referral services for seniors, their families, caregivers. Prince George's County Department of Family Services sponsors a nutrition program that offers both uh, congregate and homebound meals uh, during the week. The uh, center provides liaison services through an advisory, ser uh, advisory board, information about Bowie's Senior Center is available to the community through a multifaceted communication plan, which includes monthly newsletters and inclusion on the city's web website. Objectives and results for uh, FY 2023 was to expand existing volunteer program 20% by recruiting new volunteers and creating new volunteer job position by June, by March the 31st, 2023. Uh, 20 new volunteers have been welcomed, oriented, and trained in existing and new job positions, adding to the existing base of 70 volunteers. Therefore, this objective is completed. Uh, develop and conduct five new exercise and wellness programs that promote uh, the center's aging well philosophy by April 30th, 2023. Five new programs are being offered. Members are embracing the campus concept partnership through the Learn to Play Pickleball chair aerobics and inter international line dancing classes which are being held at the Bowie Gymnasium. A fall prevention course and stronger memory workshop are held at the uh, Senior Center. Therefore, this objective is complete. Number C there, collaborate with the Communications and Information Technology Departments on the installation of new audio video conferencing solution in the Senior Center dining room by June 30, 2023. This project is on target to be completed by June 30, 2023. Trying to, re uh, and, and one of the things, if you look at the workload and, and performance indicators here below, you can see that uh, the, the pandemic affected the city's, um, the participation there. And so we are trying to recover from that. As you can see, 2021, for example, the uh, total number of participants in classes was down from 8,000 to 5,000, and then that number is gradually growing back up. So hopefully we will be um, uh, slowly getting back to the way things were. Objectives for fiscal year 2024, implement stratification of bus driver position to bus driver one and bus driver two by July 2023. Expand annual senior information fair to include social and mental health services and referral information by October 31st, 2023. Investigate need for additional social services for seniors in Bowie. Collaborate with the grants office to research available grant funding and if needed, validate, uh, need, if the need is validated and develop a proposal for the inclusion 
in FY 2025 budget. Uh, the objective is uh, to be completed uh, in December 3rd, 2023. Uh, the, the number three there is, uh, you know, that would be arguably redundant. So we're considering anal analyzing whether we should do this or, uh, you know, lean more heavily on the county. But there, we'll see what the need is. The significant budget changes um, increased hours for part-time receptionists from uh, 0.5 FT to 0.6 to support the additional daytime coverage with a cost of 5,504. Currently, there are uh, 14. We, we project that it to be 14.9 FTEs uh, with uh, 859,300 in salaries, 244,000 in fringe benefits. You know, the professional services is a significant expense. We uh, provide services including um, instructors for expanded senior citizen classes, workshops, and which is offset by fees. Uh, also, down in the, at repair and maintenance, uh, there's a maintenance agreement for alarm center, alarm services, uh, heating, air conditioning, fire protection, pest control, all that's covered in that particular line item. And then under operating supplies, um, we, uh, we purchase special supplies unique to senior programs, operations, and funds for social events and travel. These amounts are partially offset by revenue from program fees and fundraisers. Uh, that concludes the uh, Senior Services Division. Are there any questions? Okay then. Well, if not, then we'll, we uh, we have arrived at the Youth Services uh, Division, Mayor Pro Tem. Just a quick question for Senior Shoot. Services. Um, just a curious curiosity on the pulse of the community. Have you heard any type of requests for addition? Like, is there any trend on like a particular service? that um, seniors are interested in or anything that you've seen there and like within that realm? Or do you find that from what you're learning from the senior center and the community that they're pretty fine with, you know, what they have today? Or is there any other, like, is it is food insecurity an issue or like what really is going on? So I, I don't believe we're hearing from the community that we're negligent, that we're not providing something that they need. We have classes or strong partner with the community college. So you can take a class in almost anything you want to take a class in at the senior center. We've expanded to make this campus partnership with the gymnasium so we can offer more physical classes up there as well. Um, pickleball, which of course is not only a senior activity, is taken off and flying at the gym. We also offer a class in conjunction, a, a learning class for seniors that want to you know, stick their toe in the water there. So I think the answer is no, we are not hearing from the community that there's something we're not doing. And when we do, we try to, to implement it. You know, our senior staff is here with us tonight, um, Laurel Raymond and Colleen Kofod, and they both do a tremendous job of, of listening to the community and trying to make sure we're, we're where they want us to be. Thank you so much. Just to follow up. It was just a, it was a general question to make sure that we as council members are staying updated on the pulse of the community. No implication of negligence on the city's behalf of any sort. Just trying to really understand and learn the trends and make sure that we're, we're doing our part. But thank you. And a quick question as well um, for you on IT infrastructure. I believe we have uh, computers there available for computer classes, and I believe they're also available for, uh, for use uh, if someone comes in on, you know, in random hours or what have you. Uh, what's that infrastructure look like, and uh, are we up to speed on that? So we have two computers as you come in the front door of the building, two public access computers there that anyone can use as they come in. Then we have a computer lab down the hallway, mm -hmm. and in the budget this year, in the IT budget, we will be replacing upgrading all of those computers with new ones this year. So we are trying to stay on top of that as well. Excellent, thank you. And also thank you to, uh, to not just you, but the entire staff that works there. I get uh, on a regular basis, uh, much gratitude is shared uh, with, uh, for the good works that you do, uh, particularly during COVID, there was a lot of extra effort. Uh, we were still a very engaged community, very engaged with the senior community. 
uh, and, and that was a, a very beneficial thing. It really kept people uh, sharp uh, and gave them, you know, purpose of, of friends and engagement and so forth. And that's, that's a real lifesaver for folks uh, to know that they have somebody to talk to and be engaged with, uh, activities. It, it's just, it's a, it's a real wonderful addition and a tremendous benefit to the community. So thank you for all the good works that you do uh, in, in that arena. I think along those lines, too, I think it's important that we realize with the Senior Center how important it's been when we've had those um, challenging times with our weather and allowing people to come in when the power's down and opportunities to come not only use the Senior Center as a cooling place, but also uh, for those who need to do work, who need to use computers and do those things, too. So I, I think when we look at our Senior Center, we see it. Uh, not only just serving our, our seniors, but the entire community as a whole. And I think that, that goes back to thanking all of the staff and everyone, but also um, Jolly, you and the team for making sure, and city staff, that that addresses all of the needs of our community, uh, particularly in those real times of emergency. So thank you on that. All right then, the Youth Services Bureau. The Youth Services Bureau is jointly sponsored by the City of Bowie, the State of Maryland, and Prince George's County. The primary goals are to promote positive youth development and prevent delinquency and reduce family tension and conflict. The staff provides direct services and counseling, both family group and individual, information and referral crisis intervention, suicide intervention, substance abuse prevention, community consulting, drug and alcohol-free events, school intervention, teen mentoring programs, and school liaison. Additional services added in FY 2022 provide school-based assistance for elementary students who are struggling with a return to in-person instruction. Due to the ongoing stresses facing families, we continue to offer some of our programs in an online format and continue to post content on our website and social media. In FY 2024, the Bureau expects to receive approximately 90% of its funding from the City of Bowie and the remainder coming from 95,117 in state funds. At Mayor Pro Tem, this is important, process through Prince George's County Local Government Management Board and 50,000 from the Prince George's County Council. So that's why they were they included us in uh, in their discussions. Um, so the objective for FY 2023: implement at least one event or activity identified to by participants for the FY 2022 Youth uh, Forum by December 31st. An after-school mindfulness and mental health program has begun. <clears throat> at Bowie High School, and this objective was, was complete. Organize a Family Mental Health Awareness Day by April 30, 2023. The Family Substance Abuse and Mental Health Awareness Day is scheduled to take place at Bowie State on April 29th uh, this month. Significant changes. Uh, reclassification of Clinical uh, Supervisor uh, X117 to Youth Services Assistant Director X118 at a cost of 7783 Stratification of family counselor grades X114 position to include family counselor 1 grade X114 and family counselor 2 grade X116 at 15714 As you can see, the numbers uh, associated with, with with uh, this division uh, did decrease a bit uh, during, during, during COVID, but not significantly. And, and, and as we move toward uh, uh, online operations, things kicked back in. Uh, on page 104, objectives for fiscal year 2024, implement the stratification of, of the family counselor one and two positions by July of next year, Plan and host the Youth Forum on Mental Health and Bullying, featuring the film Upstanders by March the 30th of 2024. Organize a Substance Abuse 
and Your Mental Health Awareness Day by April the 30th, 2024. The, uh, the number of persons in this division are 11.9 uh, full-time employees with salary and wages at 998,600, fringe benefits at 370,000, and uh, professional services, uh, consulting services are 49,300, and uh, materials and supplies are $33,000. So any questions about the Youth and Services, Youth Services Bureau? Um, I have a question. And again, this is just for general education and awareness. Um, in terms of personal services, full-time equivalents, can you help me understand the community coordinator, there's an executive office associate, there's an administrative assistant, and a customer services rep. What are the differences between those roles? So the executive office assistant is a higher administrative role uh, handles more difficult uh, uh, situations and f records. Um, the administrative assistant is a receptionist, similar to what our front window people are, and the customer service representative is really a, just a replacement when that those that person isn't there. So, and to do the hours, I mean, the Youth Services Bureau is open from nine in the morning until eight or nine at night, four days a week. So uh, it takes more than just a person to do, one person to do the job. So those three positions, they're not interchangeable. I would tell you the last two more or less, but the um, full-time staff certainly does more than that, that last category of customer service rep. They're, they're really just at the desk to make sure people are checked in and out. And sometimes they watch kids. If a family is in for counseling, the kids are in the waiting room with that person as well. And so for the community service coordinator, would that person like focus, would, would that part, that an example of that role would be focusing on like the youth forum or something yeah. like that? The community coordinator and the prevention coordinator do, they're not counselors per se, they're, they're not certified counselors. They're working in our schools, they're working with our kids, they're doing the mentoring program in the high school and the middle school. They're going into the schools and doing uh, drug awareness programs or prevention or mindfulness programs. So those two individuals um, do much of the same type of work in the community, but they are not counselors. Uh, thank you. And just one more question. I guess, how do you measure the success of some of the programs, like when it, as it pertains to like the school and the youth? Like, how do you know when it's time to, I guess, pivot or possibly change the objective based off of how the youth may be receiving it at the time or if there's something else that might be going on um, in the community at that time. So I think we're always looking and listening to what's going on in the schools. We're talking to the counselors, we're talking to the kids, we're having forums. And I think you would see that those programs do change all the time. They're not, cons even the mentoring program, which has consistently gone on for years, changes. The mentors change, the students change. Um, so I think you see a lot of flexibility, a lot of attention to what is being asked for by the participants, the young people in our community. Thank you. Okay then. The next division is animal control. The city provides a comprehensive animal control program with two full-time animal control officers to ensure public safety and humane treatment of animals. Mosquito control is provided through the Maryland Department of Agriculture and Mosquito Control Office in conjunction with the city's um, public works direction. That's no longer the case though. That's true. Uh, <clears throat> uh, correction, that's also controlled under coordination with the community services de department has taken over that role. All right, the objective and results of the fiscal year 2023. Established a scoop to poop campaign, uh, educating residents of the importance of responsible pet ownership to include cleaning up dog feces on walks and in their own yards by September of 2030. This objective is, uh, is on target to be completed by the end of this year. Host a Halloween costume event for pet owners and their pets by October 30, 2022. That objective was completed. Assess the dog park and, uh, well, this particular um, 
objective has evolved and uh, in preparation for the um, dedication of that park and the renovative renovation is ongoing and will certainly be ready um, for the dedication for Mr. Brady. And, uh, but it's a lot more than what was here. Uh, so, um, looking at D there, uh, the buoy claw um, is not working. We're not working with the, um, the, the farmer's market. The buoy claw, claw will host the pet adoption event at City Hall on their own uh, by the end of this year. So it's just them operating uh, singularly. Uh, as you can tell, uh, the, uh, even during the pandemic, our numbers really dropped, never really dropped very low in animal control. There was always a lot of action. And uh, we have two high-performing employees that, that are a great team, and, uh, and they really cover the city well. Uh, the objectives for 2024, in partnership with Bowie Claw, establish a little free pet pantry similar in concept to the little free library and food pantry to be installed at the Bowie Dog Park uh, uh, in July. Uh, in partnership with Bowie Claw, host a uh, fill the van, pet pantry, donation drive. We're looking at, uh, uh, at the dog park to get that done in October. Reviewed animal control staffing and determine if the stratification plan is appropriate for them. Collaborate with Bowie Claw to host uh, two kitten adoption clinics by the 30th of uh, June uh, 2024. There's a reclassification of one animal control from X112 to uh, animal control officer two, rate X113 for $5,743. Um, and um, also looking at the um, full-time employees, I mentioned there were two people we have Salaries uh, 141, 500, um, and uh, fringe benefits 54, 6, uh, and um, the uh, the other large expense uh, uh, would be uh, the professional services for um, emergency veterinary services, donation of wildlife ref refuge, mosquito control program, and so forth. Any questions about animal control? If there aren't any questions, we'll proceed to recreation and parks. The city provides recreation opportunities and park amenities for use by city residents and guests. This division plans, provides logistical support, and staffs the citywide events and programs designed to enhance the quality of life enjoyed by our residents. Activities include, but are not limited to, the Farmer's Market, Field of Honor, Memorial Day Parade, Sunday Sunset Concerts, Bowie Fest, Old Bowie Celebrates, and Beautification Awards Program, Hall of Honor, and holiday programs, including the holiday tree lighting, holiday house decorating, and Breakfast with Santa. City Parklands offers a broad spectrum of recreational opportunities and facilities that serve 2 million patrons annually. Recreations and parks responsibilities include allotting athletic fields, reserving park areas for picnics, daily monitoring of activities in the parks, enforcement of park rules, regulations, and evenings, and weekend building and, and park visitor assistance and security. Uh, Objectives for 2023 were to establish new picnic sites to replace at uh, the Allen Pond, West Pavilion, and group areas four, seven, and eight. Uh, for implementation after the amphitheater construction project, uh, it's proposed the proposed sites to be identified by September 30, 2022. Staff is developing a more affordable stage replacement plan, and we talked about that in our CIP as the location of the stage will not change, these picnic areas are no longer required for relocation. Uh, combine the Fall International Festival with Celebrate Old Bowie, focusing on a more robust single fall event. This new combined event, Celebrate Old Bowie Arts and Entertainment, Arts and International Festival, 
will be held in the fall of uh, 2022. Uh, unfortunately, the event was canceled because of rain. Uh, <clears throat> uh, install a story walk trail at Centennial Park, November 30, 2022. The objective will be completed, was completed in March of 2023. Uh, complete the comprehensive co conditions assessment and establish a replacement schedule for all benches, bleachers, grills, picnic tables, picnic sites, trash cans, and recyclable containers by December the 31st, 2022. The comprehensive condition assessment has been completed, including the geo locating of the cities in the city's uh, GIS system. <clears throat> Develop and implement traveling, a traveling special events program that promotes lesser used city parks and facilities by May the 31st, 2023. Uh, this objective is scheduled to be completed by May of this year. The uh, F there, this this objective was uh, had to be postponed and may be considered in a later date. The um, the volunteer collaboration unit organization that was going to take over this, help us with this, and take the and, and take the reins backed out and we're looking for another volunteer organization. Um, of course, for those who don't know, this this organization includes our park rangers, which are valuable and and were certainly essential uh, to us during COVID-19 because when everybody was at home, everybody was in our parks, right? And it was um, so, and, and other, uh, and, and, and this is a very essential organization and our event management people also. Objectives for the fiscal year 2024, analyze the impact of Liberty Sports Park on the city athletic field usage and revenue by August the 31st. Develop the marketing strategy to increase picnic reservations and boat rentals at Allen Pond by September of this year. Collaborate with the economic development staff to, to survey the need or interest for establish an outdoor market in the old town, in the old buoy by November 30, 2023, and forward to investigate and, if feasible, establish a food truck program to encourage and foster community spirit by May the 31st, 2024. There are no significant budget changes in this division. Uh, as you can see, there are 12.6 full-time FTEs, uh, 833,900 in salaries, 267,100 in fringe benefits, 225,000 in, in professional services, which includes city concerts, Bowie Fest, annual holiday program, uh, Bowie Celebrates, uh, Memorial Day, Field of Honor, and, and, and all the city events that we uh, know and love. The, uh, also, there is a equipment rental, portable toilet, toilets, city parks, and, and utility vehicles, portable stages, and other things that we use for our events. And a significant uh, number of $44,000 for materials and supplies. Any questions about the Recreation and Parks Division of Community Services? I have one quick question. Um, in terms of um, national trends, have you guys seen any examples of other communities, um, I guess maybe more leveraging some of their parks to host some events to generate revenue. Is that an example that you've seen across the board or is that something that's not done as much? So I'm not sure we've seen it. Our parks are not necessarily well suited for that because you often need to have fencing around an area to, for people to, to control your crowds coming in and out. Um, our, our biggest park, of course, Allen Pond, is pretty heavily used just by our residents and our visitors without having to rent it out to others for use. As, although we do have a full park rental available in the budget, if someone wants to do that, we'll talk to them in the off season. And, you know, in October or in April, perhaps we can do that. We're not actively soliciting that, though. Thank you. Quick, uh, quick question. I see for the objectives for uh, on page 110, uh, we have collaborate with economic development staff to survey need, interest, establishing outdoor market. What, what would that outdoor market uh, look like? 
So what they're, they're thinking, and I, I've sat in on meetings with them, so it would possibly be a farmer's market concept partly. It would partly be food trucks out there. It could be crafts out there. Uh, it, it, the location is difficult, you know, um, in Old Bowie to do something. So we're in conversation, though, with the economic development groups to see what they'd like to see and where they'd like to see it there. We did try this a few years ago with a, with a farmer's market with food. It did not succeed. Mm -hmm. um, but it doesn't mean that times aren't different and it's possible to, to try again. Very good. Thank you. Um, and so, so you're thinking three and four uh, would happen together, the food truck aspect, or is that separate from that? No, it, it would not necessarily happen together. Um, and we haven't really begun to explore number four there yet, um, mm -hmm. especially with the economic development folks. But um, it could be that uh, a food truck is in different parts of the city um, mm -hmm. on different, different days of the week or a different day of the month. Um, it could be at Allen Pond. It could be someplace else. Mm -hmm. um, it could be in Old Bowie as part of this as well. But that's something new that we're thinking about um, in our design for Allen Pond. We had planned to have uh, places there for food trucks to be able to plug in for electricity. Um, so I think food trucks are maybe a wave. They're not even a wave of the future. They're a wave of the present. And so we're, I think we're going to look to getting on board with that a bit if we can find uh, vendors that are interested. Obviously, it's not something we're going to set up and run a food truck. We have to find folks that want to come in, and it has to be worth their while to come in. I would think that there might be some economic incentive, some, can, to your point, worthwhile if there are associated uh, sports teams, activities, fields, that sort of thing being utilized that might be able to bring some critical mass that would make it worthwhile for them. Allen Pond on a Sunday night mm -hmm. when the concerts are going on, I think is Absolutely. a, is a you know, real possibility. 25 years ago, we did have a, um, a young lady in the community who was a special ed individual, and she came in on Sunday nights and sold hot dogs. Mm -hmm. And that was probably before all the health department rules came into effect. <laughs> but, but that is an, a spot that there are a lot of people there on Sunday nights. And so that's certainly a place that we could advertise. and you know, have the food truck set up earlier in the day, and if people come knowing dinner is available to buy, mm -hmm. that's all different than showing up with your sandwich in a sack. Absolutely. All right, thank you very much. Uh, I think there's some possibility for that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, the next one would be the Bowie Playhouse on page uh, 113. This facility provides affordable, quality, live theater and musical entertainment to citizens of Bowie and surrounding community. The Bowie Playhouse is a 150 seat fully accessible theater that is equipped with a stage, dressing rooms, orchestra pit, technical booth, fly rig system, and a multi-use lobby. The majority of the theater rental time is allocated to, city, to, to the city's in-resident production companies. Remaining rental times and dates are available to eligible performing arts groups for plays, concerts, and dance recitals. Objectives for 2023 were to market the Bowie Playhouse to attractive additional alternative types of qualifying rentals. Since FY 2022, the city's been able to attract and accommodate seven new users to the facility, so this is an ongoing objective. Develop procedures and operations for use of new projection system and equipment by October 31st, 2022. This objective will be completed by the end of June of this fiscal year. So the objectives for 2024. Research, identify, and procure sound system hardware and software needed to replace the outdated existing equipment by September 2023. Uh, that could be difficult considering the supply chain situation. Hopefully things will improve. Initiate a film slash cinema program that will enhance uses of the facility during downtime. This initiative will embrace the, and promote the arts and education. This initiative will provide seasonal entertainment offerings by December 31st, 2023. There are no significant budget changes. Uh, we have two persons working in this particular operation, 2800 for salaries, 
17, uh, 300 for fringe benefits. And, um, <clears throat> you know, professional services, 13,000. Uh, the biggest bill, of course, utilities and uh, repair and maintenance to maintain the buildings. And uh, it's an older building, but it's holding up rather well. That concludes the Playhouse Division component. Uh, are there any questions? Yes, sir. Um, have we looked at, and maybe it's not a perfect match, but um, have we looked at availability of the space for homeschool uh, communities uh, to utilize uh, during off peak hours? I know I say peak hours, but during uh, you know, dark uh, evenings and, and periods. I know that there's, a, you know, Brava is available for, uh, uh, for the school system. Uh, we have access to it, but I don't think that it's likely that there be much uh, time available there. Has there been any, any interest expressed uh, by the homeschool community for that? I don't think we've had any interest. I don't know that we've reached out directly, and I've just made a note to, to go ahead and reach out to our homeschool communities and ask them. We do have a response from our uh, dance studio type groups. Mm -hmm. They come in and do their um, end of the year performances there. Excellent. All right. Thank you. I'll be curious to see if there's uh, some value there. All right, then. Parks and grounds. The responsibility of this division includes the maintenance of city-owned grounds, including parks, ball fields, trails, fences, playgrounds, and flower beds. This division is responsible for collection of refuse and recycling on these properties. This division maintains all trees in the city right away, partners with the Public Works in the annual leave collection program, and performs plowing and salting operations at city facilities. The objectives for 2023 include uh, a contract with the replacement of deteriorating white pine trees along Northview Drive adjacent to Allen Pond. The replacement will be giant Arbor Vitez project to be completed by December 31st, 2022. This objective is complete. Install warning, warning tracks on Black Sock Field number one and two by March the 31st of 2023. This objective was completed. Renovate and repair drainage at the city's dog park by April 30th. This objective is scheduled to be completed as a part of that renovation project I mentioned earlier. Um, inspect and renovate plantings of all city electronic message boards by May the 31st, 2023. This objective was completed, will be completed on May 31st. Contract for replacement of Glen Allen Park Playground by June 30, 2023. And it's objective is on course for that to be that contract to be settled and let. Objective for fiscal year 2024. Budget for the implementation of sustainability division, recycling goals in city parks by November 30, 2023. Replace deteriorating white pine trees. Phase two along Northview Drive, adjacent to Allen Pond by December 31st of 2023. Develop a stratification proposal for trade positions within Parks and Grounds Division and submit recommendations for the FY25 budget. Install warning tracks at Black Sock, Parks, Black Sock Park Fields at numbers three and four by March of 2024 and replace the roof at the East Pavilion at uh, Allen Pond Park by June 30, 2024. The significant budget changes in include uh, reclassification of two park maintenance supervisor grades, Y113 positions, to assistant park and ground superintendents grade, Y114 for 10,984. This is a, an alignment of, so, of, of similar duties as to what is, what is currently in, in public works. Reclassify one administrative grade uh, X110 to administrative specialist grade X112 at a $9,062.
this is one of the larger divisions, maybe second only to the um, solid waste division in public works, at 37.2 full-time employees. The, uh, as, and accordingly, the salary and wages are 2 million 224 600 and salary 830,200 in fringe benefits. Uh, significant expense also include the public utility, of course, repair and maintenance. This includes um, fees for feed pruning and brace, brace and, and preservation trees in Bel Air, Sussex Lane, Town Green, and for services beyond staff capabilities, including maintenance and, and repair of irrigation systems, electrician to provide professional services for parks, and other requirements that exceed the scope of our employees. Uh, we spend significant on commodities at 190,300, um, providing uh, for the purchase of such items as hand tools, rakes, shovels, lumber, fence materials, and more. Operating supplies, uh, 233, 100, fertilizer, herbicides, grass seed, marking lime for, for baseball fields, and, and more. Any questions regarding the Parks and Grounds Division of Community Services? Yeah, Mr. City Manager, real quick. Um, on the uh, objective for the uh, dog park, I know I brought this up a couple times before. So I've been talking a lot to dog owners in the city, um, and one of the things that frequently comes up is on the city dog park currently, the drainage of the dog park is such that even when new mulch um, is brought in, uh, after you know even modest rainfall, all the mulch ends up getting pushed to the back left corner of the dog park, um, and then it just needs to keep getting fixed again and again. I realize that that kind of drainage project is uh, potentially very expensive, but uh, is that something we could look into as a long-term objective uh, to make the dog park more more usable? So, um, Councilman Esto, um, actually, we're looking into next year, you're going to see a proposal for a number of upgrades at the dog park. Um, one maybe, and it'll be your decision, as Council, to what you want to implement or not. The under, underground uh, drainage is probably about $250,000. We're looking to potentially bring water into the park. Right now, we have um, our park operations division brings in water on a daily basis, sometimes twice a day, in a container. Um, that dispenses clean water for the dogs, but we're going to look into what the cost is. Originally, it was prohibitive to the cost of the dog park to do that. Um, so we have that and a number of other um, things that we're going to present to you in next year's budget for a couple of years of improvements to the dog park, and you'll make a decision then as to where you want to go. We did just finish um, putting additional wood chips down on the dog park this Saturday morning, so it is finished, that project is finished, and it was looking pretty good, and you're going to see it looking better in the next two months as we prepare it for its rededication. Is there also a universe where it's potentially cheaper to just establish a second dog park in an area where drainage isn't as much of an issue or where it doesn't require that level of work? So uh, are you talking about eliminating this one and creating a new one or having two dog parks in the city? Uh, either having to or creating a new one. And we certainly can look into the expense of, uh, and if there's a loca appropriate location to put a second one. I know that in the work that I've been doing with the racetrack um, group, uh, they're proposing a dog park within that uh, piece of property. Gotcha. Uh, I, I just don't know what the costs are. You know, I mean, if we're you know if we're talking about massive sunk costs at a current location, but there's another location where it's cheaper to just put up new fence and a sign, and occasionally have you know a, a, a you know, park ranger wander by or an animal control officer wander by, you know, if that's if that's cheaper, then great. I just don't know what the numbers are, and I'd be curious. We can look into that for you. Thank you so much. One other question on parks and grounds. Um, uh, I, I just want to be sure I understand correctly. I, I watched with great interest the video that the city's comm teams put together on uh, the annual kind of spring uh, uh, preparation work, and I really appreciate staff's work on that. The city looks really great, been walking around, um, and, and just really appreciate all the plantings and flowers and everything that makes the city look nice. Um, is it true that we're replanting several thousand new plants every year? Um, as opposed to, to leaning more heavily on perennials? Can, can, can someone speak a little bit to kind of our, our current beautification efforts? Well, we do both in the city. 
Um, but gardeners will tell you that most of the color um, is going to come from your annuals, not your perennials. So, it, you know, that would be a different direction for us to go if we didn't want to see the color around the city. You can certainly plant green that will be a perennial, but you won't see the flowering that we see now that I think is very attractive to a lot of people. I, I, I think I would certainly agree with that uh, from an aesthetic perspective. Um, do we know how much it's costing us, the difference between the annuals and the perennials? I, I like beauty a lot. I just like to know what I'm paying for it. And I can't give it to you right this okay. minute, but we do have that. In, well, we, we can tell you what we spend on perennials every year for sure. sure. And I can ask our park operations, our parks and grounds team, if they could give us an idea of what it would cost if we went away from the annuals. Yeah, I, I'm almost afraid to ask. I found out recently how much my mother spent on artwork last year in her retirement, and I was a little bit shocked. Uh, on the other hand, uh, you know, who, who doesn't like pretty things? And, and sometimes the, the nice-looking things are, are worth paying for. So I think I the, one of the differences between the annuals and, and the perennials is that the, the annuals bloom for a longer period of time, where the perennials bloom and go away, like, like the ones in my house, and you'll see out there. And so you end up with a nice plant, but no flowers where those annuals bloom for several months. Understood. Uh, and again, I'm, I'm not looking to necessarily cut or eliminate this. I was mostly just curious. I just kind of, I, I like to know what the price tag is. Um, and to be clear, I think residents by and large would pay the price uh, for, for the nicer annuals. Uh, I just, I just kind of like to know. Especially when people say things like, why is it so expensive to run a city? Well, I like to be able to tell them how much those plants cost, uh, given that we plant like 10,000 of them a year. Thank you, team. Okay then, the next uh, division is the um, ice arena. The objective of the, uh, of the ice arena is to provide recreational program for indoor ice skating for community residents. The program is administered by four full-time staff and is augmented by part-time employees. The majority of the available ice time is devoted to public skating sessions, groups lessons, in ice rentals, hockey, and figure skating. The arena is open 10 months out of the year and, and they celebrated 50 years in 2021. Summer activities include learn to skate camps, clinics for hockey, figure skating, as well as public sessions, group sessions, group lessons, and other ice rentals. Dry floor activities are held in the facilities in May and June including the Bowie Fest Home Show. Objectives for FY 2023 provides subject matter expertise on the design and engineering of the new Bowie Ice Arena project by June 30, 2023. That objective was completed. Develop a move management plan for the Bowie Ice Arena uh, for 20, June 30, 2023. It was deferred to coincide with the with the facilities construction that I mentioned earlier in the evening. Con collaborate with the local police and fire departments to host a safety awareness event, including a hockey game, skate with a cop, hands only CPR, and self-defense training by June 30, 2023. This has uh, been scheduled, scheduled for June 10th of 2023. Objective for 2024. Collaborate with Special Events Division to provide a market slash craft fair event by June 30, 2024, and develop a relocation plan for the Bowie Ice Arena by next year, next June. Uh, counting the part-time employees in all FTEs and 9.6 for the um, ice rink, ice arena, 581,500 in salaries, 166,200 in fringe benefits, um, professional services at 102,800 uh, includes disc jockey services, skate instructors, referees for the hockey league, and active net fees. Um, also, uh, utilities are 171, and uh, we are repairing maintenance. That number is is I think is now at 81,700, yes. and uh, and uh, of course operating supplies, uh, and fuel oil, parts for equipment, custodial supplies, fuel for generators, and all and all the all the expenses. Any questions regarding the budget for the ice arena? 
Okay, the next thing would be then historic properties. The city of Bowie maintains six museum properties and support facilities with the purpose to collect, preserve, and interpret the historical and cultural uh, materials relevant to the development of this region and namely the histories of the structures of the Bel Air Mansion Museum circa 1745, the Bel Air Stables 1907, the Bowie Railway Station and Huntington Museums 1910 to 1933 and the Historic Building and Loan 1929 opened as the Bowie, uh, uh, Old Bowie Heritage Welcome Center the 1906 Harmel House in Old Mitchellville Storekeeper's Residence is home for the National Capital Radio and Television Museum operated by the Radio History Society Incorporated. The, the support facility is 1921 Levitt, Levitt Home, Ranch Home, and is home to the Prince George's County Genealogy Library. The objective for 2023 was to collaborate with the Special Events Coordinator to host the Health and Wellness Expo at Bel Air Mansion. Is this the one that was canceled? That was canceled because the guys pulled out. Because of what? The different vendors pulled out. Yeah, the <clears throat> number A was canceled because the vendors that were <clears throat> were essential to this objective uh, withdrew, and we're we have to go back to the starting uh, uh, the start point on this one. And, consider it later. B, upload the Bel Air Stable archival records to the Past Perfect online platform by April 30, 2023. The uploading of the Bel Air Stable archive records is 86% complete. Uh, we, we are stifled because our, the, the assistant art uh, museum person that was working this was stolen to go to work somewhere else, so we had to. We, we intend to finish this objective once we complete the recruitment and replace that that employee. Um, objectives for fiscal year 2024: collaborate with the Daughters of the American Revolution, the Prince George's County African American Genealogy Society, and other local institutions to develop and host a weekend genealogy workshop for both beginner and advanced participants by July 31st, 2023. Number two, create a curator led lecture or lecture series to update the public about the story of Bel Air's enslaved population by October 30th, 1st, 2023. Create and lead a two educational offsite, lead two educational offsite trips that will enhance participants' knowledge of thoroughbred racing by uh, May 31st, 2024. Uh, there are 5.4 FTE projected in this division, $312,900 in salaries, $81,500 in fringe. Uh, professional services are significant at $53,000. Provide professional services for conservation of the museum objectives and exhibits, uh, including um, fees for educational program consultants, uh, incidental appraisal fees and the and any services for design and specifications for museum physical plant. Uh, on uh, page 124, there is a significant amount for uh, repair and maintenance, $163,000. It's in a really old building, so it needs constant upkeep, upkeep. And supplies commensurate with the operation, 20000 Any um, Questions about historic properties? Uh, yes, Mr. City Manager. Um, for, for several years now, I've talked about you know wanting to do more programming that has the ability to generate revenue. Um, you look at Maryland National Capital Park and Planning. They've got Newton White, Montpelier, Oxon Hill, Snowden Manor, um, and I think I've attended weddings at all those that I'm sure generated a lot of cash for those mansions. And, and look, I really appreciate what our historic properties folks do but we're spending nearly three quarters of a million dollars on you know, properties that are generating, as far as I can tell, basically no revenue. And I think it's great that we wanna work with the Genealogy Society and have a bunch of middle schoolers you know, visit our historic property. 
But I, I, I can't wrap my head around what prevents us from putting the artwork and the vases in an attic for wedding season and, and, and hosting some events. Um, and, and, and I get that, you know, it, it's not, you know, you can't do an 1,000 person event there. It's not as big as some of the other uh, MNC PPC facilities. But I, I don't think we, we're prevented from doing an 100, 200 person wedding. I don't think we're prevented from doing corporate events or, or, or other things. But I would really like to have us look at how we can seriously rethink how we use this facility um, in a way that helps us at least recoup some of that three quarter of a million dollars on, on what is, I have to say, probably one of the most underutilized assets in Bowie. Just to underscore my point, I was speaking to, uh, speaking to a resident who lives in the F section within maybe a six minute walk at most of the Bel Air mansion. This person's lived in Bowie for nine years, had no idea the Bel Air mansion existed. They've been here for nine years, six minutes away. <laughs> and this isn't the first person I've met, by the way, in Bowie who didn't even know we had this thing. So no one seems to know these places even exist. No one seems to care. And we seem to be doing everything in our power to making them available to people who frankly aren't getting as much out of the uh, experience or out of the property as they could be. So I know that there's issues when we do events with noise. I know there's issues with tents and with parking, with things like that. But I am absolutely convinced that we can find a way to mitigate those concerns, even if it doesn't mean we're making you know, all of our money back, even if it's just you know, cutting the expense of the place down by a few hundred thousand dollars a year. I gotta believe there's a way to do that. That makes it, that makes it worth our time. Does staff have any thoughts on that? Am I completely off base? So I know that our historic properties team is very concerned about um, having people inside certain parts of the buildings that are when they're not supervised. Um, if it is your direction that you would like them to create revenue-based programming, then we certainly can come up with a proposal um, to do that. So we have in Maryland National Capital Park and Planning's inventory, several very similar buildings where they have found a way to do it. And if I have to get on the phone with the county and interview a bunch of people and come to you with a list of specific things, I'll do it. But I, I, I get that we do things a certain way and I get we're very concerned about the vases and you know toddlers with crayons writing on walls. But like I said, everyone else seems to know how to do this. I, I cannot believe for the life of me that we in Bowie can't figure this out. Well, uh, uh, Councilman, we can certainly talk to uh, Park and Planning and, and just see what they're doing and, and how they're managing this um, and, and, and consider it and, 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 if, and if come back with a plan that you all could approve uh, if, if the entire council is inclined to, to, to utilize facility that way. And to be clear, I d in no way want to disparage our staff because they are doing exactly their job as it's currently written, as we've directed. And I think they do it very well. And we've seen more wine and dine events. I was thrilled uh, that they've been doing movie nights at the mansion. I mean, they've been doing a genuinely good job making more use of the space and making it more available, inviting the community to things that, that they didn't used to do. And I give them credit. I don't want anyone to come away thinking that I'm just, you know, taking this out on our, on our historic staff. But I do think it's time my colleagues and I give direction to look at program alternatives. And unless any of my colleagues object, I would like to add an objective in this coming year's budget that we talk to Maryland National Capital Park and Planning and begin adding, I, uh, gathering ideas for how we can start doing more uh, uh, programming that can generate some revenue. Even if it doesn't make all the money back, okay. But if we can cut some of these costs down, I think it'll go a long way in the future. And it'll better utilize an asset that, again, a lot of people don't even know exists. Thank you. Let me ask a follow-up question on Councilmember Estev's thought. Sally, do we have the infrastructure to do something like this? Like, if we were to theoretically say, okay, we're going to use this venue to do weddings, like, does our infrastructure support that at, at this time? So we do weddings at the mansion. I believe the number is 75 is the maximum number that we allow in the mansion for a wedding, but we do those regularly. I think what the councilman might be referring to more is putting up a tent outside, perhaps. Um, you, you can't do a, I don't think anyone, rarely will a person do a wedding without a choice of an indoor facility because of weather concerns. 
So uh, we're, we're either looking at the mansion or the stable because there's a large area in the center of the stable there. Um, there are probably, and we certainly can look into this. You know, there's going to be restroom costs because I'm not sure our facilities could handle a large group. Um, there are parking concerns because neither facility has significant parking. But I'm not saying that it cannot be done. Uh, it's oh. just a direction. If you're, if you're giving us that direction, then certainly our staff will, you know, look into the best way to do that and come up with a program to to do something even if it's a pilot program to do a couple and see what happens sure let me reframe my question if we were to increase the volume of the the magnitude of events that we do there are currently do we have the infrastructure to support that today infrastructure in manpower liability all of it well, liability, yes. Would we have to bring on some additional staff, possibly part-time staff? Depends on how large an event is. Right now, we have one person, generally, when there's an event going on. Um, so it just it would just take more. Now, this year, we did have planned, um, I'm trying to remember what the name of it was. It was a program that we were working cooperatively with the Wine Council, I believe it was, to do an outdoor event, kind of a cigars and wine type concept. And the, the group pulled out. You know, they decided for whatever their reasons were, and I don't remember now what it was exactly, but if the date was a conflict, they had a better offer someplace else. I'm not sure what it was, but we were trying to move forward with something that uh, similar to what you're asking for, and it didn't happen, which in no way means that we can't try that one again, or um, the idea of doing a wedding inside of the, the stable um, as opposed to the mansion, because we do weddings at the mansion. We just limit them to 75. Uh, but the stable in the off season, because we do use the parking lot across the street, but we have to use it during non-pool times. So there'd be a limitation on time. And I expect there would be rental that we don't have in our budget right now to be able to rent large tents and put them up and so on. But uh, certainly we can um, look at the park and planning and see what do they do? How do they do it? Why do they do it? What do they charge for it? What is, what is the infrastructure required? Um, the cost because you're going to take a, a leap of faith here, um, and then we can come back to you with with a proposal. You know, we need a couple months to to put all that together and come back to you. We wouldn't be implementing this year's budget probably. We'd have to either act for supplemental funds after the budget is approved or put it in our budget for next year. Uh, to follow up on uh, Mayor Pro and Dave point, I'm sure there will be some initial upfront costs. What I can say is I've heard from an awful lot of wedding planners event managers, photographers, and people who are familiar with the Bel Air Mansion and have done events all throughout the county at other public facilities and have all said the same thing. You guys are sitting on a gold mine. And there may be some initial upfront costs, but I have yet to hear anybody who does this for a living who's looked at the Bel Air Mansion and said, nah, this can't be done here. So just, just, just sharing my perspective on that. We'll put an objective together and, and get the wording to you um, during the budget process. I appreciate that very much. Thank you. A uh, quick question uh, on the follow-up on that subject. Uh, the number of 75, from, from whence is uh, that derived? Is that, a, uh, is that a capacity limit from the fire marshal, or is that our own uh, self-imposed? I'd have to get back to you with an answer for that. Because if it's, if it's a fire marshal, I may be in trouble at my house from time to time. Because <clears throat> um, <laughs> I have a smaller house, and uh, I think that we, we ought to be able to handle big, bigger than 75. Uh, that having been said, I, I do appreciate the, the idea of not wanting the property and the uh, accoutrements uh, that we have there uh, being, you know, damaged uh, or worn out. And, you know, that's certainly uh, uh, admirable and we do want to preserve. Uh, but I do believe there is a balance with accessibility and utilization uh, that we ought to try and uh, try and take into account. And uh, I, I certainly think it would be it would be good. And uh, I think I think it'd be uh, really neat for our residents to be able to uh, to have their wedding right here in their hometown. Uh, you know, their church right nearby, and then going right to the local. Um, you know, mansion of, of choice right there on, uh, on, 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 on the main drag. So I think that's, I think that'd be good. Thank you. 
I do believe as it stands now, we have a overall capacity limit of what, 159 or 169? I'm not 100% sure of what the capacity is. It, it's, it, the fire marshal tells us that. Marshal. We probably yeah, have it posted um, yeah. in the rooms and there's really only the two rooms at the mansion that you would use right. for this. And they really aren't that big, but, but I'll get back to you with whatever yeah. the fire marshal regulations are for that. But okay, yeah. I think we're looking at external use as well, like a tent in the back right. or something like that. Okay. All right then. Well, last but not least, the gymnasium. <clears throat> the gymnasium provides court space for community to participate in indoor athletic activities. Staff collaborates with the local organizations to provide recreational activities that include basketball, volleyball, pickleball, cheer, and indoor walking. In keeping with the gymnasium and the senior center campus concept, weekday morning programs support wellness activities to better serve the senior population. Two rooms are available for meeting, meetings, classes, and parties. Summer activities include sports camps and clinics. Local and regional tournaments are hosted throughout the year. And the objectives for 2023 were to uh, collaborate with Building maintenance to have the senior, the interior walls of the gymnasium painted and the flooring and the lobby, hallway, concession area replaced during the annual facility maintenance closure. The objectives to be complete by September 2022. The hallway, concession area, meeting room, and offices were painted. The concession area was remodeled. New reflooring installed in the lobbies and hallway and concession area in the main. Uh, office, the painting of the interior walls of the gymnasium was the deferred. Overall, the objective was complete. Uh, host the early voting, fall 22, statewide election. Objective was complete November 4th, uh, 2022. Um, objectives for um, 2024. The objective number one should be deleted. That was already accomplished and is no longer relevant. The investigate, to investigate collaborative opportunities to host regional pickleball tournaments. Objective to be completed by December 31st of 2023. Design and host two Friday night teen events by June 30th of next year. We have 7.2 employees assigned to the gymnasium. Uh, salaries 501,000. Friends benefits 135800 uh, Big expenses for public utilities, professional services, and uh, repair and maintenance, including electrical, plumbing, HVAC, and other general maintenance. And it also includes refinishing the floors. The uh, operating expenses uh, and uh, operating supplies, excuse me, includes programs, first aid, concession, and custodial supplies. Any questions related to the gymnasium division of community services? Uh, yes, I'm afraid to even bring this up because I, I know exactly which people are going to call me uh, first thing tomorrow by saying this. But um, uh, I'm aware that there are several professional coaches, private professional coaches, who book a great amount of open space gym time to provide for charge private lessons to students. I understand that this is something that we've sort of um, come to an understanding with uh, some of these private coaches about, but it does concern me when open gym time is consistently booked in advance for private for-profit making, when, when this is clearly designed to be a, a public facility that we are running to the tune of almost a million dollars next year. Um, I recognize that open gym time uh, it might be hard to fill uh, sometimes, and I recognize that these private coaches might very well be utilizing the space during times of the week when there just aren't a lot of other users available. But I've also heard from members of the community that because it's sort of known, oh, like certain times are just going to belong to these private coaches, no point in even considering the gym a place to spend time, 
it, it does seem to have a bit of a chilling effect on our residents' ability or even or considering using the facility. Does staff have any thoughts about this? So we do have a rental program at the gymnasium. We generally do not rent to private individuals that are coaching, for example, during any of the prime times. But if you go to the gym, you will see that there are a significant number of hours during the middle of the day when these other groups don't want the gym. So yes, we have no problem renting to them during those times. If the concern that, that I have heard that we're trying to deal with is individuals who don't rent the time but want to do their personal training with others during the time that the gym court is open for open use. And that's the one we're working to try to um, stop. It's just difficult because there's no proof that something's happening. Um, but if, if any of your constituents would like to call us and let us know uh, specifically what, what times are being rented, we can certainly take a look. Um, but to the best of my knowledge, all of the prime time is being taken by Boys and Girls Club, AAU groups, um, typical groups that I think you would expect to be renting time at the gym. What would you consider to be the non-prime time hours at the gym? So non-prime time generally is from opening time in the morning until about 4 in the afternoon, 5 in the afternoon. We even put a surcharge on last year for the prime hours um, to try to get people to move to the non-prime hours. Haven't seen a lot of good results on that yet. Um, now, during the daytime, we have pickleball in there three or four days a week, and they utilize three of the courts now. We have them striped off for pickleball, and they're in there from, I want to say, 10 until 2 every day. And then we have walkers every morning at from 9 to 10, I believe it is. Can staff make available to us as a follow-up um, the current uh, uh, usage? I recognize that that might be seasonal, so if you need to break that data up by season, w whatever is logical, um, please do so. But I'd be very curious to see gym utilization based on you know hours, kind of groups, and, and what these groups are doing. Uh, do we currently, so if, if I'm a private coach, and I want to take up space during non-prime prime time hours during the week to charge students fees for teaching them whatever it is I'm teaching them. Am I paying an additional fee to the city beyond just the utilization of the space? You're, you're paying more of a, com a commercial fee than you would be paying an individual fee. So there is a specific commercial fee we would be charging as a city to that private coach? We have, we have uh, for-profit and non-profit fees. We have resident and non-resident fees. Okay, so there is, but the issue then it sounds like is this is operating more on an honor system maybe. Um, perhaps. I think our gym staff know our users pretty well. So I, okay. I, like I said, I would really like to know, and the person doesn't have to identify themselves, okay. but if they could just let us know where they see that happening. We'd be happy to, to do a deeper dive into that. Do we have any um, user agreements with gym members? where we would have boilerplate language that would give us the ability to permanently or, or temporarily or in some way sanction uh, a user who is dishonest about their use of the gym? Do we have any such standard agreements that, that we sign with users? Well, do you, no, I don't believe, I believe the answer to that would be no. I mean, you have to have a membership in the gym to use the gym, mm -hmm. but I don't believe there's anything in that membership that says, you know, I certify that I will not use it for, you know, private lessons or whatever. It may be worth looking into, and this may very well just be a question for the city attorney, maybe worth looking into uh, a user agreement of some kind, maybe signed at the time of acquiring a gym membership, but in particular my interest would be in having a user agreement that would give us some cover in the event we discovered that someone was misrepresenting their use of the gym. Um, and again, I recognize in the grand scheme of things this is a pretty small thing to complain about, but it's in a million dollar a year facility, it's intended to be used by the public, and I just want to make sure that we're not um, inadvertently creating incentives that, that, that disrupt the public availability of the facility. That's all I'm getting at. Okay, thank you. All right, I appreciate it, staff, thank you. Just a quick follow-up question on that. Do we have any um, strategic partnerships with any surrounding facilities that are leveraged for these types of activities where they send overflow to us, or is that something that we could potentially explore? So um, I think it's a common thing in gymnasiums to not be really busy in the middle of the day. 
Um, people are working, people are going to school. Um, we certainly, we have relationships with the two other gyms in Bowie, the South Bowie and the Bowie Community Center. Um, and we certainly, I'm sure, have let them know, because I'm sure that happens, I know that it happens, that if we're booked, we'll tell people to go there, and I'm sure if they're booked, they'll tell people to come to us. But like I say, it's the prime time that gets, it, everybody wants to say, it's like church on Christmas and Easter. Everybody goes to church, you gotta have bigger churches. Same thing for gymnasiums. If we could only stretch it from, during the evening hours during the basketball season, you know, we could fill every hour two times over. I guess my last question on this would be, I know we're talking about doing a pickleball uh, tournament, you know? Have we considered ever doing a basketball tournament, hosted by the city? I don't believe the city has hosted one, but there are many groups that come in and host basketball tournaments. AAU, and other, I understand that, but has the city ever looked at hosting a tournament? To the best of my knowledge, we have not hosted one. Okay. Oh. That, uh, that concludes our work for this evening, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just a reminder that um, on Wednesday, um, the 26th, we have another budget work session number four schedule, which will include city manager's office, police, uh, finance, and uh, non-departmentals. And then on Monday, we, uh, the first, we have the uh, public hearing on the, on the constant yield. And then on May the 8th, we have our final work session, number five, which will include Department of Planning, Community Development, and, um, and uh, Information Technology, and um, General Fund Summaries. If there are no questions, Mr. Mayor, I, I said we've concluded our work for this evening. Hey, to, to everyone, thank you so very much, staff. All of you, uh, thank you everyone for being here, participating. Uh, to my colleagues, thank you. And uh, we look forward to talking with you on Wednesday. Have a good evening. <laughs>